In the world of engines, there was once a promising configuration, compact, balanced, and efficient. Yet it quietly faded into obscurity. This was the square four. With four cylinders arranged in a square, two in front, two behind, and two mechanically linked crankshafts, the square four was rare, only mass-produced by a few manufacturers. From the 1930s to the 1950s, it powered British motorcycles with pride. Today, it's almost forgotten, despite its untapped technical potential that remains impressive even now. In 1931, a motorcycle rolled out of the Ariel factory in England, but this wasn't an ordinary bike. Hidden inside its frame was an engine with a configuration no one had seen before, the Square 4. This engine was designed by Edward Turner, who would later become a legend in the automotive world. The design was truly unique. Four cylinders and two crankshafts arranged in a square shape. At a time when most motorcycles still use single-cylinder or twin engines, Ariel came up with a more complex approach that delivered much smoother performance and more power. When it was first launched, the engine's performance was impressive. It ran very smoothly, produced lots of torque, and had a distinctive sound that made it instantly recognizable. The Ariel Square 4 quickly became a luxury motorcycle with a high price tag, mainly because its production process was complicated and required a lot of manual finishing. But in terms of reputation, it was highly respected and its quality was never in doubt. Unfortunately, the British motorcycle industry at that time faced an old problem, inconsistent build quality. While Japanese manufacturers started using more organized and efficient production systems, British companies still struggled with quality control. As you might guess, even though Ariel had a unique and innovative product, they slowly began to lose ground in the global market. In the end, production of the Square 4 engine stopped in 1959. Still, it left behind a unique legacy as the only mass-produced four-stroke Square 4 engine in the world. Now out, let's talk about the basic configuration of the Square 4 engine. Basically, this engine is like two twin-cylinder engines combined into a single block, forming a square layout, with two cylinders at the front and two at the back. Each pair of cylinders has its own crankshaft, so in total, the engine uses two crankshafts. These two crankshafts are connected in the middle by a gear, which keeps them synchronized and drives a single output shaft. If you look at the engine from above, its layout looks like the letter H. The two pistons on the left and right sides move in the same direction, while the two crankshafts rotate in opposite directions to balance out rotational forces. This design makes the Square 4 engine very compact for a four-cylinder, and it can potentially produce very low vibration, especially if it uses a 270-degree crankshaft setup, which we'll talk about later at the end. In the early aerial versions, each cylinder had only two valves, one intake valve and one exhaust valve. These valves were controlled by a single camshaft through rocker arms. The intake ports were positioned in the center of the engine block, while the exhaust ports were on the outside. Here's where it gets tricky. The intake manifold had to fit between the lifters, valve springs, and camshaft, leaving very limited space for the airflow. Because of this, the Ariel Square 4 used only one carburetor to feed fuel to all four cylinders. This limited the engine's ability to deliver enough air and fuel, so at high revs, the performance dropped off or felt breathless. With this setup, the engine worked best for producing torque at low to mid RPM, rather than reaching high rev performance like modern racing engines. But remember, this technology was developed back in the 1930s. With modern approaches like double overhead camshaft, individual fuel injection systems, and precision porting, these limitations could be overcome significantly. Besides the Square 4, there's another unique engine configuration that became quite popular, the VR engine. The VR engine is a blend between an inline engine and a V engine, 
usually with a very narrow cylinder angle, around 10 to 15 degrees, which makes it very compact. Compared to the Square 4, which has two crankshafts and a square-shaped layout, the VR engine uses only one crankshaft with the cylinders arranged slightly offset and close together. This makes the VR engine mechanically simpler, but still very space efficient. In terms of performance, the Square 4 has an advantage in rotational balance because of its two crankshafts spinning in opposite directions, resulting in very smooth power delivery and minimal vibration. Meanwhile, the VR engine relies more on its compact design and space-saving benefits without sacrificing much performance, which makes it great for cars with limited engine bay space, but still needing good power and torque. So while both have unique approaches to balancing space and performance, the Square 4 is more appealing to enthusiasts who love engine smoothness and its distinctive character and sound. On the other hand, the VR engine is more practical for modern cars, where compactness and packaging matter most. Now let's move on to the strengths and weaknesses of the Aerial Square 4 engine. This engine has several unique advantages that are rarely found in other engine configurations. First, it's very compact. Thanks to its square piston layout and two parallel crankshafts, the overall width of the engine can be kept minimal. This is especially useful for motorcycles or small vehicles, where space efficiency is critical. Second, it produces very little vibration. Even in its early versions, the engine was already quite smooth because the two crankshafts rotated in opposite directions. But with the use of a 270-degree crankshaft configuration, which we'll talk about later, the engine can achieve almost perfect primary and secondary balance. Third, the engine offers great potential for different applications. In motorcycles, it's well-suited for cruisers that need strong torque and power. In four-wheeled vehicles, its compact design makes it easier to add twin turbochargers or hybrid systems since there's more free space on the sides and above the engine. However, there are a few drawbacks that need to be considered. The first problem is related to cooling. The two rear cylinders get much less airflow than the two front cylinders. In the early aerial versions, this often led to overheating. But today, this issue isn't really a big problem anymore because liquid cooling has become the industry standard. So we can say this challenge is mostly outdated. The second issue, and technically the most significant, is the engine's breathing limitation. Since all the intake ports are located in the center, while the space above them is already crowded with the camshaft, valve springs, and rocker arms, the design of the intake manifold is very limited in both size and length. This makes it harder for air to flow smoothly into the combustion chambers. As a result, the Aerial Square 4 engine was designed more for strong low-end torque rather than high rev performance. This is also why four-stroke engines with the Square 4 configuration are extremely rare, while two-stroke Square 4 engines are more common because they don't need intake valves and can draw the fuel-air mixture directly through the crank case. Still, with modern technology like DOHC, double overhead camshaft, individual throttle bodies, and repositioning of the fuel tank, these limitations could be solved. In fact, it's not impossible to imagine a modern Square 4 engine that could deliver high performance, and that same unique exhaust note you'd expect from a V4 Superbike. Back in its day, the Aerial Square 4 engine might have been seen as technology that had reached its limits. But if we look at it from a modern engineering perspective, this engine still has huge potential. One innovation that could bring the Square 4 back to life is changing the crankshaft configuration from the original 180 degrees to a 270 degree twin setup. Why does this matter? In an engine with a 270 degree configuration, when one piston is at top dead center TDC, the other piston is halfway through its stroke. This means that two pistons are at TDC while the other two are in the middle of their travel. At that midpoint, 
the pistons move at their highest speed but with no acceleration, which theoretically produces no primary vibration, the classic up and down shaking force. Because the engine has two crankshafts rotating in opposite directions, these primary forces can be perfectly balanced using counterweights. Plus, the secondary vibration forces, which are usually harder to cancel out, also naturally cancel each other in the 270 degree setup. The result is an engine with near perfect internal balance without needing extra balancer shafts. In the past, making a 270 degree crankshaft was complex, expensive, and required a lot of trial and error. Back in the days of manual forging and no help from CAD or CNC machines, very few manufacturers wanted to take that risk. But today, thanks to CAD design and precision machining, this process can be done quickly and easily. It's no surprise that many modern motorcycles now use 270-degree twin configurations, from the Yamaha MT series to the Ducati Scrambler. Now, imagine applying this idea to a square four engine. For one, we'd get an exhaust sound very close to a racing V4, but with a much smaller, lighter engine. And this configuration would be ideal for future high-performance cars. A simple twin turbo setup with one turbocharger on each side of the engine. Hybrid systems that are easy to integrate because there's extra space around and above the engine for electric motors or inverters. An optimal weight distribution since the parallel crankshafts allow the engine to sit lower in the chassis, lowering the center of gravity. With its compact packaging and high potential for smoothness, the Square 4 offers a unique character, minimal vibration, a distinctive exhaust note, smaller space requirements, and great fit for high performance applications. Of course, the mass market might not be ready, or might not even care, about this kind of engine layout. But who knows, someday, maybe a boutique brand will take the risk to build a limited batch of modern Square 4 engines, proving that this design isn't outdated at all. The Square 4 engine really is something special. From its rich history and clever core design to its promising modern potential, it has everything needed to become a true legend. In the past, it struggled to compete because of high production costs, cooling issues, and intake space limitations. But with today's technology, all of these challenges can be solved. By using a 270-degree crankshaft and modern KID or CNC manufacturing, the Square 4 could become an engine with near-perfect balance, a unique and appealing sound, and a very compact size. So what do you think about this engine?